Hey, it's that rig guy here. I'm up here at Barmer again. Love this place. It's Easter Sunday, so happy Easter to all. And today we're just out chasing carp again, seeing what the environment's picked up since last time I was up here. Carp are still pretty plentiful. We've got a few already. Uh, but as you see behind us, we've got the camping sites here open at, over here at Avaline Corner, which is really, really good. Today I'm using a combination of different things. Um, I've got a nitro worm here, which I picked up from Real and Deal in uh, Glenelg. Excellent place. Uh, go and see Troy. Grab a couple of level rigs items from there and bait and other tackle that you need. Once again, I've got my sharp burly. Can't go anywhere without that. I'm my trusty uh, Tana rod with my next Have reel that I like to use it. And today, just for something different, I'm going to be running the old style Bakelite uh, Albert Sidecar reel. Um, I've had this bad boy since I was 16, um, now 47, so you can tell she's still this, this, um, the harshness of time. She's caught a lot of fish, I've caught mulloway on it, and that's uh, I'm out right out here to give it a run because she hasn't been on the sea water for a while. So I'm going to get this other rod out, I'm going to check this one because I had a couple of bites just before, and I'll get back to you soon. See you in a minute. So, got myself a little tacker, running sinker, early spring, nitro worm on the Albi outfit. Now, a lot of people I know out there don't like Albi reels because of the fact that they have trouble casting them. Uh, that's fully understandable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a quick brief rundown. So I'll get the camera person to come around the other side here. What I do when I cast my Albi, I'd hold on to that, we've got our side switch, I turn it to there, and I just find it such a simple over the shoulder, and then off I go, straight out, bang. They, me personally, I reckon they cast better. They are a one to one ratio, and there's not really a drag system on it. So when you do hook up onto something big, they're called knuckle bruises for a reason. They do get there and add that little bit of bit more excitement. You can tighten the pressure on the on the reel, call it a drag if you want, but it's not one where it actually lets line out. You've got to physically do that all by yourself. Great Australian made product. Problem is it lasts for years and years and years, which is why the company's had a bit of trouble uh, in the past for net, um, going under that because they build such a great product that it never breaks down. As I said, this is 36 years old. Uh, 31, sorry. It's 31 years old. In a couple of years, it'll be 36. Right, put that in there. Climb the line a little bit. And yeah, we'll get back to you shortly. There you see, the old, the old stuff still works really, really well. A bit better carp than what I've been catching uh, the last couple of times I was up here. Uh, for the carp frenzy, she was pretty small. For the last time I was up, used the float line and everything else uh, around the bend a little bit further. I was still fairly small, so over here at Overlane Corner or Napa's Bridge, they seem to be a little bit more far, few and far between, but they're also a little bit bigger as well. Uh, this one here I got on the uh, worm rig. What I've also got here today also is the lucky bait that I showed you last time, which works a real treat. And soon I'm going to get there and throw a couple of um, old stale uh, chicks on and see how I go with that. Uh, just a little bit of a challenge I've been given, so let's see how I go. And I'm going to stay away, try and stay away from the, the corn, right, the soft plastic corn that we norm, I've been using as well. Once again, you can get that at Gotcha, uh, in McGill, or on our website. Are currently out of stock, so it is very, very popular. Um, if you need any Lovell Rigs gear while you're up here at Barmer, go and see the guys at uh, 
top coach at the BP and they should be able to help you out. So I'm going to dispatch this fella. I'm going to check my other rod because the line's not facing the way it was when I casted it out there and we'll get back to you shortly. Gradually getting better, bigger and better as the day goes on. So just a simple float, simple running sinker rig. Float uh, with a burly spring. As I said, this one here I'm running worm on. If you let go of the hook, there you go, look at that. A lot better than the last one. At the moment, I'm casting this side cast out. I'm sitting down, I'm getting hit with it. The other one, at the moment with the, um, Lucky bait on it, it's getting a couple of taps on that, but it's not really um, doing its study. Oh, it's bouncing at the moment. Let's see if I've got something on there. I think I may have missed it. bait on, like our lucky bait here. Uh, I'll just hook that through a bit there. Never hook your hook or your lure through the actual eye of the rod. You can actually damage this part in here. So just on the side there is more than fine to do that with. I'm just going to pull out a bit of doe bait. Lucky bait. Nice yellow colour. And what you do is just get it nice and nicely doughed up like that and just push it on around the hook very much like using a bread bait but you want to make sure it doesn't matter if you're using a bread bait or any type of dough bait that you keep the point of the hook exposed if you don't do that what's going to happen is the fish is going to come along and they're not going to get hooked because it's not exposed so get on there nice like so Break a little bit off, make it look a little bit more pre presentable. And then with that there, what I'm going to do is I've got my favourite bit of burley. Break that in there. And then we'll cast that out. Now, if you notice on this one here, I set up a little bit different. I'm using a very light sinker, basically using that as a cast weight along with the burley and the burley spring. So just so that the fish can just pick it up and just off they go with it. Normally I use top rigs. Dark rigs. But my wonderful camera assistant has got there and is using at the moment. Uh, and why is she using it at the moment? Because she stole them out of my bag. So, when you get there and you come up fishing the barmer, and you got someone else with you, bring your second set just in case someone else steals them. I didn't expect it to happen, but it did. So, I've got this one out now. I'm going to redo my other one. Oh, or am I? Hang on a second. Let's see what's going to happen here. that I've got with me today is my homemade stuff which is just breadcrumbs, vanilla essence, chocolate sauce or chocolate topping 
and we've got some creamed corn through it with some uh, fish flakes. This is a good old stuff from uh, Coles for the goldfish. It works quite well. But I seem to be having a bit of luck with the um, fish mustard burley at the moment, so, which is a product from Sharp. I've had some left over from last time I was up, so I thought I'd get there and just use it all up today. Well, nothing much happening on this one. I'll put this down, get the other one out, and yeah, we'll get back to you in a sec. Right, guys, so I'm still going to do a bit of a chip challenge. So I've got my chip from last night's dinner. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it lengthwise. I'm just going to cut it up just big enough to be able to put it on the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that one there, I'll cut that a bit more. Got a few pieces, so I'm just going to grab that piece there. All right, so what we're going to do, cut for a wander. I'm just going to put it on this right here. It wants to play the game with me. And all we're going to do is just thread it through. And I'm just going to come back through again. Just like that. Hook's exposed. And we'll see how we go on that. Not casting out very far. I'll just set that down. See how we go. So that's the challenge that's been set for me. And we'll see how we go with that. I'll, once she hooks up, we'll um, bring it in and I'll show you what's going on with it. Okay. So, do chips work for catch a car? Well, after rebaiting a few times, after cast out and a couple of little bits here and nibbles there, finally successful in landing a carp on a chip. So, success. Challenge complete. Next challenge, why does someone get there and throw one to me? I'm more than happy to give it a go. So, I'm going to bait this up again. I'll probably put some a dough bait or a um, bit of worm or something on there and to see how we're going. So yeah, one carp, chip bait, she works. That's pretty good to me. Get back to you shortly. So I decided to change locations. So I decided to change locations due to the wind. Uh, we're, we were over at Overland Corner there, Napa's Bridge, the wind was coming across, which was making it hard to pick up on bites and that. So what we've done is we've moved here close through the town. Uh, see, it's good to see that there's quite a few people using this area for water sports and stuff like that. Like we've got kayakers over here, we've got people with jet skis. Uh, it's not exactly the, the hottest day or the warmest day, but people are making good use of the lake, which is really, really good. And not only that, the fish are still biting, as you can see right here. We've got nice little one here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get there and have a coffee because when you fish you've got to have coffee, have a, have a bit of a sanger and we're going to get back into it. So yeah, see you soon. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to be the professional here. I'm the one supposed to be catching all the fish. I'm that rig guy, it's my YouTube. But when you come fishing, it's one of those things that's either you catch or you don't. Well, I haven't been overly successful here, but as you can see, my camera person has. So what's going to happen is, next episode, it's not going to be that rig guy. It's going to be that rig girl. I'll be behind the camera, and she'll be doing the, the episode. So until next time, I'm that rig guy, tight lines, Get out and get amongst it, and that rig girl will be next.